Hey Julie, so here's the video about the masking within Agisoft. Right here you can see there's an outline that's recognized within Agisoft as having this area as the mask. I've gone through and done up until here. And each one that you've done, when you open up that image, it will show you that outline. It'll show you the grayed area that it's using. All right, and then here's what it looks like beforehand. So what I'm going to show you is how to create a mask really, really quick. Um, I'll go to this one here because it's the easiest, and then I'll go to another one. I'll do two of them. So here, like I said up here, you have your intelligent scissors. You can use that, but I'm not going to use that straight away because of the feathers. I'm going to do magic wand right now just to show you my magic wand options. My tolerance is about right here. And um, when you hold down your control key, it will allow you to select more than one space. Now I'm holding control and you know just like Photoshop so right now I'm basically selecting different areas and when you select that area I don't believe that it's necessarily I'm not sure if it's limited by um, whether or not uh, that color is adjacent to it I think it might also detect nearby and then select that that nearby color as well so it can bleed through where in Photoshop sometimes it doesn't but anyway I'm going to continue to hold down and select these I uh, keep selecting all right, and there's a few tricks, so just finish watching on this here, because as you notice, um, we have little artifacts here, here, here. Not everything got picked up right away, and we want to make sure that we take care of that. So this looks pretty good. Now within the area, you right-click, and then add selection. And you can also do subtract selection. If something went in too much, you can actually subtract it out the same way, like in Photoshop, using those intelligent scissors. So we're going to add the selection, and now we can see our outline. Uh, right now, I'm not worrying too much about those jagged edges, but we'll go to Intelligent Scissors, click once, and now it's starting to do the line. Click again, click again, click again, click again. It doesn't have to be this precise, but just to give you an example here, I'm going to add that to the selection, and you can do other things. So right here, that's kind of like a preliminary on how you would go ahead and do it uh, using the wand. Now, um, along the edges, what I do... So I do a rectangle, add selection. I do a rectangle here on the right, and I make sure I'm getting down low enough on each one if there's like one straggler down there. But I want to make sure my reference points aren't impacted by any kind of anomaly around the edge, um, which I think in our case would be so anomalous that it would probably create a little matching point. All right, so we have that. Wonderful. Now we're going to go over to ones that are a little bit more difficult. Um, where it bleeds through a little bit. So uh, let me go through, I left off here. Open this one. All right, so let's do this one. We're gonna try the wand, but the wand isn't gonna be, uh, might not work as good. Let's see. I was trying to automate the whole thing before. You see how it bleeds in a little bit? It doesn't always have to, but some of them, when it rotated around, it was impossible for it not to bleed in. So I was actually having to cut some of it out. Um, control Z. Oh, I'll just start over. Oh, you see, it bleeds in a little bit. So in this situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in here. I'm going to add the selection, okay? And then I'm going to go to my intelligent scissors. I'm going to zoom in here so I can get the entire image zoomed in within my screen and I'm going to go to here and I'm going to go through to my scissors and now that I've selected that area I'm going to right click and I'm going to subtract that from the selection there we go now we have our turntable um, clearly and, and nice and crisply outlined. You don't have to be this prim. I haven't really been all that much either, but since I'm in here, I may as well go ahead and do a slight little refine in here. It doesn't hurt, hopefully. All right, so we get that one. And again, remember what I'm doing I'm not doing the rectangle on each and every single one because it actually takes more time. You understand this about productivity if you have to keep switching the tools over and over again versus just doing everything in one swoop each time. So I left off at 1617 was the last one I believe that I did my rectangles with. 
And then after that, I do have some that I need to do the rectangles with for the rest. So I'm just taking care of my borders afterwards. And um, you basically see what I'm doing here for the masking. Now what this will allow it to do is it will calculate all of its alignment points based on everything, as you know, that's within here. Now the pattern that I put on the bottom is going to add a little bit of extra determination for the program outside of just the texturing and that would be assuming that we didn't have such a lavish selection of points for it to choose as markers to compile the alignment of the object. So um, I hope you're having success and um, I hope that you got a little bit of education on this for the masking. And I do believe that this is fundamental when having even lighting. Of course, my lighting, my white balance and everything wasn't proper here. Um, I wasn't intending to do that. Um, I can just change the lighting if I want, but this is dirty light. Um, it's just even dirty light. So I'm going to finish up here with these and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run it through. Um, as you see, I'm getting to a better part where it's mostly black down here and it's not going to bleed too much into my statue. But it does a great job of masking. So I'm really hoping that it's going to produce stellar results this way um, by having the even lighting and letting the software think that we're actually revolving around the object instead of the object rotating in front of the camera's point of view. So with that said, good luck. I'm going to finish this up and go ahead and try out and play with the masking, especially if you use the green screen or if you have a light object like this. Had I had all black in the back, that would have been absolutely perfect. Um, now I know. That's cool. So play around with that as well. It'll be very handy and play around with your tolerances. And um, I'll talk to you in a little bit, okay? All right. Bye-bye.